This goes to the very top. I'm sure of it. They didn't mean for anybody to see this. Chio, this is too much for either of us. We both know how hard you work. Just get some sleep, okay? People keep saying you're sick. I don't want anything worse to happen to you because of this conspiracy Van, stuff. I'm, I'm fine, Van. Really, it's important. More important than sleep, more important than my job. You're right, I work hard, but now I know why I'm doing it. I can't do it anymore. I can't keep doing this. This has to get out. Wait, you're recording this? Matsudo, I, I know. don't- It's okay, it's for my daughter. You think I expect to get out of this alive? They're already talking about surgery for my sickness. A digital voice box? I have my own designs. Oh, God, Chio. I have a strong box they set up where they let me send her letters once a month. I know the responses they give me aren't really hers, but it's my only chance. If I sneak a code in, she'll know what it means. She'll know what to do. She's got friends, Van. Friends in the stars. I, I don't know, Chio. This sounds too risky. I need I need to go. I don't think it'll be good if I'm seen with you anymore. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> God, I'm still having trouble wrapping my head around all this. Their doctor said I shouldn't be speaking like this for another month after my surgery, but I need to get this down. Okay. Okay. So this all started two weeks ago. I just finished working on designs for a sort of fancy internal shield I was interested in, and then they asked me to clear out an old server farm they were going to update. I said sure. Nothing weird about that. Run-of-the-mill, tech shit, I do that all the time. So I did, regular procedure, all on my own. I'm not now, but I was a trusted employee. Always the curious fucking idiot, I wanted to see what useless data they were getting rid of, maybe it could be sold off, or was actually interesting. Maybe it could get me off this shithole rock. But no. Much worse. A whole boatload of data, videos, images, text documents, all pertaining to something called the Godfoils. Official shit, too. Some go as far back as the late 2020s, from NASA computers on Earth. No joke. I was giddy. Felt like, I dunno, I felt like someone in a story. Finding all this spooky corrupt government stuff, confirming what I already thought. Obviously, it went downhill from there. The second I shared it with somebody, they ratted, and the factory militia came down on me. Said I talked too much, that I must have a sickness. That's how I ended up with this thing in my chest, speaking like this. So they could monitor my words. That's why I have to get this out quick. So they wiped all the data. Like I was supposed to. Shoved me in this room and sliced me open. But they can't remove it from my brain. I'm a smartass, girl. And I know you are too, just like your mom. I just hope you get this. Okay, sorry. The god foils. Basically, back in 2025 and Voyager 1 was supposed to die, NASA lost comms with it. All normal, right? No. It went two weeks early. When it came back online, the small bits of data they could scrape together seemed to say it struck something. Something big. About the size of a planet. A big fucking planet. All the adorable Facebook memorials had to be rewritten, and NASA, struck by a nationwide curiosity, sent a vessel out after it to see what happened. Then it faded into obscurity for about 50 years. 6.25 presidents later, they brought back pictures and much more. Pieces of what seemed to be black and red soft stone, wrinkles like a human brain spilling over the mass of it. Alongside the remains of Voyager 1, they had brought home chips off the block of a god. An elder god of fear. The slaughter, to be exact. Yes, I know this sounds actually insane, newer, but it's the truth. I've been working with this stuff for years, without knowing it. I know how it works, I know it feeds on fear. I've seen other varieties of it. I know what it can do to humans. And it did. It certainly worked on those NASA scientists, from what the records show. Extremely long files dictate discussions they recorded with, this. Thing they called Daliner. None of them are audio, thank God, but even the words. It's filled with hunger, constantly egging on those in the room to up and murder each other. All contained in a tiny black rock. Over the span of a few years, this entity shared its knowledge of creation and the universe. It referred anything other than itself as God foils, and itself as God. At least a part of a God. 
a sixteenth, as he said. He refers to them as siblings, and despises them as much as he loves them. Before the universe was as it was now, he said, the gods and the godfoils were one. Though constantly fighting for dominance, like two warring sides of a coin. This was the universe. Constant godlike warfare, though together. Sealed in one. He said it was eternal pain, like what we call hell, but worse, 16,000 fold. Eventually, the god foils one, shattering the universe, splitting it in two. One half, the gods rule over, the other, the god foils, who spent billions of years in thought, before agreeing upon a few basic facts. This must have happened before. This will happen again. And no matter what, newfound freedom must be felt by all. So in their half of the universe, called Halcyon, by the shard of God, they split themselves infinitesimally, until they made up all matter in our known universe. Billions upon billions of atoms, all the smallest part of a god, and when combined enough, they formed sentient thought, just like their forefathers, the godfoils. That's what we are, humans. While the gods split themselves up only 16 times, each a representation of the basest emotion any godfoil could feel. Fear. Their side of the coin, now called dread, is the basis of perpendicularity travel. This shard of a god is where the idea came from. Enough fear in one godfoil's brain will pierce the fabric of reality, and for a brief moment, they'll travel from Halcyon into dread. Enough for the gods to feed on their fear, then send them back. This explains nightmares, as well as ghost stories, and many other things. Since their side of the world is split only 16 ways, they have much less space between the important parts, making travel through dread, called dread hopping, by some assholes, much quicker. This means the design for the black box integral to creating a perpendicularity has something odd going on inside. These ideas wouldn't be expanded upon until later, but I'll get to that. NASA, with all this information in mind, set about the next 50 years of planning and scheming to create the generation ships. A ploy, just to nab the other 15 shards, and a terrible one at that. It's still ongoing, most never having reached the planet they'd aimed for. The AI, however, seem to be simulacrum of these gods. Perhaps just their personalities, their names and thoughts. When they were created by Daliner, in something that was described as extremely painful for him, the world at large experienced the week of nightmares. If you don't know what that is, ask your grandmother, as they were the only ones alive to remember. Ah shit, I need to wrap this up. My daughter, I truly hope you get this message and share it with your star friends, someone needs to do something about this. It's been almost 100 years since the generation ships launched, and every scientist involved with the discovery of the Shard of Slaughter is noted as dying in a brutal accident of sudden violence. Someone behind the scenes is still working this, though, like a fucking marionette. Someone who got rid of my goddamn voice box, who killed Van, who will kill me. I need you to get this out of here. There's more, and if you can get me out, I'll tell you, though I'm not sure if I'll even be able to. I love you, daughter. Chio.